Hi guys, this is Anthony. Um, we're going to continue our talk on variables. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about some rules for naming variables. So I'm just going to paste some text in here. Um, I have four different variables here. We have one called str, which is set to a string. We have one underscore prv set to a boolean. We have one that starts with a dollar sign and we have one that starts with a number. Okay, and one of these is illegal in JavaScript, and that is the one that starts with number. Okay, so we can try and uh, we can try and write this out. So let's put 12 in here and see what happens. And nothing happens. Okay, so one way to check your JavaScript errors is we can right-click in Chrome, click Inspect, and we'll see at the bottom right here. This shows we have one JavaScript error. Okay, let's click on that and it says invalid left hand assignment on line 11. Okay, so we go over to line 11 here. Okay, so it, it has a problem with this starting with a number. Okay, if we, if we change this, if we put some text after, okay, that's still, that's still illegal, right? We need to, but if we put text in front and the number after, that's fine. Okay. okay, we can see we have no errors here and we got the output that we wanted. Um, so all of these three are okay, but we cannot start, can't start with a number. Okay, let's get rid of this. Okay. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is um, JavaScript has some reserved keywords. So it's certain certain words that are, are used by JavaScript in the you know in its core language and and we can't use those words to name our variables. So if you go to Google and you just search JavaScript reserve words, the first link is from Mozilla, who is um you know they're the creators of JavaScript. And um, we get to this page and this information is all up to date and there are certain reserve words we can't use. So for example, we can try, um, you can see there's new here, so let's try var new is equal to new, right? And we want to write this out and see what happens. We put our new, put our variable name in there, we save it, and okay, we got unexpected token new on line eight. So, I mean, if this was any other word that's not a reserve word, we wouldn't have any problem here. Just try any. Okay, no errors and it works. So be careful about the reserve words and, and if we go down here, actually there's words reserved for possible future use. And I was messing around with some of these and some of them actually still work. Um, but obviously it's recommended not to use them because even if they work now, if they're used in the future, then you know your application isn't going to work in the future because it's not going to allow that as a variable okay so pay attention to the JavaScript um, reserve words okay let's get rid of this okay um, the next thing I want to talk about is something about strings so Let's just make a string. Um, hello, okay. Put a variable name in there. Okay, obviously this is no problem, okay. But what if we want to mm, put something in here like this? She said hello, okay. So what you want to do is you know this is obviously a quotation somebody said this so you want it you know you can see how the person wants to output this if we load here nothing happens okay our variables match up we inspect and we get unexpected identifier okay so the problem here is that um, JavaScript is looking at this they're saying okay this is the beginning of the string and it's seeing this as the end of the string, okay? 
and it's looking for a semicolon here, okay? But it's not getting a semicolon. It's getting a letter, which means it doesn't work. It's, it's, it's created an error, okay? So there's some things we can do about this. We can, we can change these to single quotation marks, okay? So now this is the beginning of the string. This is the end of the string, and it's followed by a semicolon, okay? Everything looks good here, and it works fine, okay? Another way is we put our double quotation marks, which is what we wanted, and okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to escape these. So we're going to tell we're going to tell JavaScript that we don't want this to be taken as the end of the string. We want this to be taken literally as a double quotation mark. So we're going to escape it with um, this backslash here. And we also have to escape this one because this isn't the end of the string. This is the end of the string. So we're going to escape that like that. Okay. And we're going to reload. And that's fine. That's just what we want. Okay. Same thing with single quotation marks. So we can say, uh, we can say, it's a ball. All right. Load it. Nothing. We have an error. Unexpected identifier. So we can just escape this here, and it's all good, okay? So this is a lot, obviously in English we have lots of, you know, quotation marks, double quotation marks in our sentences, so we have to know how to escape them um, when it's necessary, okay? All right, let's get rid of this. Um, I want to talk about one more thing, which is um, sort of going back to the first lesson. And well, let's, let me just type it up. So we're going to have A set to 2, B is set to A. Then we're going to delete A. And we're going to write B out to the browser. Okay. So let's see what happens here. Okay, it writes out too. Um, so you might be a bit surprised by this because you might think, okay, well, B is set to A, but we deleted A here. So how are we able to write? How are we able to write out B to the browser? Okay. So this shows that these A and B. They are two totally independent variables, and they have their own space in memory. So let's go through this <coughs> line by line. So A is set to 2, and then B is set to A. B is set to the value of A. The value of A is 2, so now B equals 2, 2. So we delete A here. It doesn't matter. B is still set to 2. So we can write out B here, no problem, and we get a 2. Okay. However, if we try to write out A here, it doesn't work. So A was in fact deleted here, but B was already set to two, okay? So we have no problem. We can always write out B, okay? Um, one more example. We're gonna take C, we're gonna set it to three. D is set to C. Now we're gonna set C to four. Okay, so what's happening here is um, C is set to 3, and then we're overwriting the value of C here as 4. So this 3 here is it's inaccessible now. It's, it's essentially gone because it's been overwritten by C. Okay, now let's alert out. Let's alert out D. So alert is going to give us the JavaScript um, pop-up box, which you've probably seen many times before. And let's see what happens. Okay, it's three, okay? So even though C was set to four here, it doesn't matter, D is three. So let's just go through it one time. C is set to three, D is set to C, okay? C was three at this time, so D is set to three. Then we set C to four, okay, but it doesn't matter, D is still three, and we alert D, D is three, okay? All right, that's all I want to talk about in this lesson, and I'll see you in the next one.